Hello. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Needles at the Ready. I'm Kevin. I'm Ray. Did you forget almost what you No, I wasn't sure how I was going to go, but... Oh. Um, this is episode 51. Yes, it is. Today is Saturday, December 11th. Can you it believe is, it already? I know. Christmas is in two weeks. Is it really? Two weeks from today. Oh, that gives me a little agita. Right? Mm-hmm. So, welcome to all the new viewers. Welcome back, all the returning viewers. We appreciate it. We want to say thank you. We just hit 12,000 subscribers. I know. Yesterday. So. It's crazy to think that 12,000 of you hit that button. <laughs> <laughs> and come and watch us do what we do and chat and yeah. have joined our community. We always say thank I think we try to always say thank you, but we really can't say thank you enough. It's yeah. been yeah. a fun ride. Sure has. So I think we'll just jump right in. How's our two weeks been? What have we been doing? Okay. A lot of things. Getting the house ready for the holidays. We, let's see. We went and cut down our tree. We did last week and last Friday. Yep, we have brought back the tradition. Uh, well, past I don't know. Since we moved into the house, we've always wanted a real tree, and we probably talked about this a bunch of times. And um, my brother and my sister in law and our niece have been coming with us for the past couple of years. Last year we had to do the COVID route, and yeah, you know the two of us went, but we brought that back this year. We went with my brother and. My sister-in-law and our niece. Do I have It was a so much fun. Well, I think we did post some pictures on Instagram. I'm not sure if we did it on the Needles at the Ready one or... I, I don't know, know if I have the photo of the five of us. Oh, that was that's a good one. Yeah, do you? I don't know, actually. I don't think If you I do, did. can you share it with me? I don't. So we go to Jones Tree Farm here in Shelton, Connecticut. So it's only like a 15-minute drive for us. us. Mm-hmm. Very cute. Me and the niece. So speaking of the niece, today is her birthday. Oh, she's six years old. Happy they're birthday. They're currently on their way to Disney, so I'm sure they're not watching this. Um, so happy birthday, Reese. Happy birthday, Reese. And tying we- into that, we, on Wednesday night, we went over their house mm-hmm. to celebrate her birthday early. And it was cute because they let her know on Wednesday that she was going to Disney. Yeah, it was a know, surprise. So. so her parents kept it a secret for a very long time. They were very planned... They had this all planned out and very organized. Yeah. It was very cute. They wrote on the cake, um, like on the, she's just learning how to read. So they wrote on the, like the plate that the cake sat on, um, you're going to Disney. And she, they made her like read it out loud. It took and her then a it took times. her some time to process, which was really, really cute. Yeah. Um, hey, books. So Tarquin's going to lay down with us and hang he out. Is. Yeah. Today's probably going to be a longer episode. We have quite a few things to show, but we'll get there soon. I'm buckle up, Buttercup. It's not going to apologize, but there was inadvertently a lot of purchases made. Inadvertently, yeah, it yeah. didn't mean to happen. It just occurred. Yeah, things. It was just... like I went on a damn shopping spree over the last two weeks, mm-hmm. and Ray said to me, um, "Kevin, I thought we were going to be knitting from our stash." I was like, "Well, I have to build up the stash in order to be able to knit from it." True, and then you did say you qualified that by saying, "We're going to start in the new year." Yes, right? I did. 2022. You said that, that was the goal. 2022, we've yeah, been so. our stash. So we'll hold you to that. And episode 40, 51 is when you said that last. Okay. So yeah, so we did that. That was doing? fun. Um, um, we decorated the house, put up our tree. We kind of well, took our time this year. Yeah, we decorating did. Decorating, like putting the lights up and stuff. Yeah, we didn't go crazy and do it all in one day. Yeah. Um, so we got, we have two trees. We have our cut down tree, our living tree, and the dining room. And then we have an artificial tree in our Living small, room. like, tabletop one. Yeah, small flooded. tabletop. Um, so, and then we named them. Mm-hmm. It's something, I don't know how it started. It started the first year we got it, and it, it started with an H, so we've just continued. So this year, the letter... And each year we do a, yeah, we... We go up the next, go up letter. The next so letter. So this now. year was M. Mm-hmm. So the living tree is Magnus, and the artificial tree is Milo. Yep. We sync them to our Echo, so that we could tell that artificial intelligence lady to turn them on and off for us Mm -hmm. so it's really cute and then when we get the tree cut too they give us a pewter ornament yeah so we've started putting those on the artificial tree in the living room which is yeah we put them all there we have like six of them now which is really cool well one of them was the one i bought from the like boy scout at the grocery store one year i think even back in the apartment i don't know that that was here no it wasn't here i think we had that when we were at the apartment um so what else have we done so we did the christmas tree the decorating your um we did 
uh, Reese's birthday. And then last weekend, we went to Westport Yarns. We did. It was so much fun. It and we'll was. talk more about it as you see um, the, the damage that Kevin did. Yeah, we will. Yeah. Um, it was our second time going. And we went, or maybe it was your third time? No, I think it was my second time. So I feel like the first time I went must have been years ago because I believe... I, I wasn't knitting. I was crocheting though because I remember I bought a skein of yarn. I, It would have been around the time that Reese was born. So right mm-hmm. before she was born. Because I believe I knit her baby booties from... Oh my gosh, I forgot you did that. With, is it Koigo yarn? Koigo? Uh-huh. That I got from Westport Yarns. And I feel like that may be the only time. So that yarn store is 20 minutes south of us. And the one yep. that we typically go to, Knit New Haven, is about 15, 20 minutes north of us. Mm-hmm. Um, so we went because um, Katie from Kitty to Bags reached out to Yay. us and let us know she was doing a trunk show there. So And we showed her bags uh, multiple times on yeah. this podcast. They're amazing. We have a couple more Um to show to, to show. today. Yeah. Um, so we wanted the opportunity to go support, support her, her and yeah. meet her in person. Um, so we went and had a, a lovely time. And then yeah. we um, got to meet two new um, knitting friends, friends now. podcasters. Yeah. So we knit, we met um, Kim and Jana from, they just knit started together with Kim and Jana. They just started a podcast and I believe they're in Westchester, New York area. Oh, I didn't catch where they were, but I think close it was, enough to like Westport and stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so we got to meet them in the uh, parking lot there of Westport Yarns and got to chat for a couple minutes. Mm-hmm. And um, we've watched. Kim drives the... a really cool flower covered bug Be- beetle. beetle. Yeah. Um, Which is really awesome. Yeah. And so they just started a YouTube channel. We will link it below. Um, we've watched the. So we've watched two episodes like of their podcast episodes and then they have which i think this is kind of cool um and it works and that's the thing it it really works for them so their podcasts they are doing once a month from a local yarn store of theirs and then they do these in between ones when they can find time at one of their houses Mm -hmm. to maybe discuss like a certain project or um going to fiber festivals or this past one was their trip to westport yarns yeah um and they're shorter episodes, the ones in between. They're, I yeah. think their regular podcast lasts about 45 minutes, they yes. were saying. And then they shoot for around 15 minutes or so, but in true podcaster fashion, they typically go a little bit longer. Yeah, which like is, that's do, how it goes. Because they're cute and they chat. And, yeah. Um, and, and keep it's, chatting. Don't, they, yeah. Kim's like, oh no, we got off track again. I love when they get off track. Me too. So stay off track. Yeah, we live off track. We do. Yeah, we that's, are. that's right. <laughs> so, um, um, but it's, it's good because Kim has been knitting for like decades. 30, right? 30 years, years or something. And then Jana has been knitting for about two and a half years, which is about when I started knitting too. I think it was yeah. like, I started knitting, it was two years ago in like November. October, November. It was November. November. Mm-hmm. Knit New Haven's like anniversary sales when you yep, went and I, bought like mm-hmm. yarn. Yep. Because I had just finished a Ross hat and I was all about the knitting at that point. And now you've fully converted and... I have converted. Yeah. I think it's safe to say addict. that I've converted. You're an addict. I am. But it's okay. There are worse things to be addicted to than knitting. Than yarn. Than yarn. So uh, that was really, really fun. Yeah. The The shop is adorable. Um, it was, and I love how they had their sock yarn set up because they had it like the cubies, you know, for, um, for the yarn. And they put all like similar colors together in one cube so that you can kind of build your own fade or, which worked out really well because I'll show you one of the purchases that I made. Well, which was for Reese. This episode is going to be all about Reese today, apparently. Well, um, that and Brooklyn Tweed. Oh, much. yeah, Brooklyn Tweed. Oh, my gosh. So that was really fun. I mean, we've had a, a, a normal two weeks, but it's fun. Yeah. I think that's about it. Yeah. Okay. Right? So add mini stuff. We closed our knit along. So we had the accessory knit along that ran from September to the end of November. Yes. Um, we pulled three winners. We did. Oh, um, want to go over them? Yeah, we did one from Ravelry Chatter, one from Ravelry FO, and one from the Instagram hashtags that we had. That's right. So, so it, this was incredible. In the FO thread, we had over 800 entries. You're all awesome. Knitting fools. And it's been so awesome because, like, I've gotten so many ideas from, like, looking at them. Like, yeah. Trying to choose a winner and, like, going to see, like all the different hats and smaller projects 
really cool. So, drum roll, please. We chose these um, via our artificial intelligence, choosing a number <laughs> for us. So, this is, let's start here. This is the chatter thread. The winner was number 114, and your ha- your um, handle is Carnacy. Carnacy? Carnacy? I would say Carnacy. Can I just, yeah, there we go. And if that's you, you are our first winner. Come Please contact down. us. Come on down. So shoot us a, um, a message on Ravelry, Instagram, yeah. or shoot us an email. Email is probably the the best. Yeah, any of, the, whatever, any of those. Whatever work. works. So she was doing the boho texture bandana, which is really cool. And I love that um, that texture that it has. I haven't done it. a bandana in a long time. I would I've like never to done do a one. bandana. I did one at a worsted weight yarn before, before we ever started this okay. channel. So congratulations, you're our first winner. Our second winner, the artificial intelligence really dug down deep. So all of you last minute entries, um, it does pay <laughs> to enter even last minute. This was number 804, and this is Donna55. Donna55, congratulations. She entered this 11 days ago, so see. Um, She actually knit a bunch of hats. I just took a screenshot of her name, but if you go back, we left the the uh, whatchamacallit, the threads open. Like we, you know, they're, they're, they're locked, but you can still go through and view them. Um, and she knit about three or four different hats and put them all in, in one uh, entry. And some of them have cables. This one, I, I don't know the name of it, but it's got a really interesting texture to it. I wonder if part of the texture is the yarn. I don't know because the ribbing doesn't look like it has that. Yeah, texture. you're right. So it must be the stitch. I probably should have um, done a little research. Done a little bit more research, but anyway, congratulations, Donna fifty five. And then, last but not least, this is a beautiful hat. It is. Um, I think th- is that a Jody? Yes, yeah, Jody Jody's? Brown. Right. So this was from Instagram. You guys came out in droves on Instagram. It was very difficult um, to like view everything. It took forever for Instagram to like load all of the the entries, yeah. and um, it was well worth it though. So thank you all for for participating and and uh, putting in those hashtags. This one is Mrs. Patchy. You're on Instagram, and you knit the she knit the wavy legs by Jody Brown. I love the too. the color too. Yeah, like that's a nice, really nice neutral. So, yeah, I was nice just spray. saying I need to get back. I need to do some neutral knitting. So please reach out to us, all of you winners, and congratulations. We have some oh. um, nice prizes. Yes, congratulations, everybody. And thank you, everybody, for participating. Yes. Our next knit along will be um, next year. Next sometime. year. Yeah, we, we don't do any after this just to allow everybody some time to breathe and yeah. no added stress. Um, so another... there's a lot of them going on right now for like gift knitting. And I know Knit for Brains has the gift, the knits knit along yeah. going on. Um, you can enter if you're, if you're doing any gift knitting, which and... we should enter, actually. Oh, we should. Yeah. All right. So some next that mini thing, what we like to do when we hit a, a milestone on the channels, we like to do a live for y'all. We do. So we're going to do a live next Sunday at, I th- what time do we say? That's December 19th. What time do we say? You want to do 2 p.m. Eastern 2 p.m. Standard Eastern time. time. And what we're going to do is below in the show notes, we are going to include a, a Google Doc form. Where we're going to do a Q&A. So we're going to yeah. allow you guys to submit some questions. We'll pick a bunch of them and we'll answer your questions live next Sunday. Mm-hmm. So feel free. You can enter as many questions as you'd like. Um, and then we'll just randomly pick them as we go through. Yeah. If we you know, if we have a lot, if we don't have very many, then we'll answer your questions live as you chat, as you, we chat. But we'll keep it nice and simple and just kind of hang out. Yeah. And then to just keep um, something else that's going to come up, we're going to do a live. I think it's January 2nd. So last year, I thought it was a lot of fun. We talked about our favorite knits from the previous year. So yeah. January 2nd, we'll do a live, and it'll probably be the same time, about 2 p.m., and we'll talk about our favorite knits from 2021. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was fun last year yeah. to do that. Yeah, yeah, that was actually, I still think that's probably my favorite live that we've done. Yeah, was it's that one of mine. Yeah. I, I like them all. I love them. I love doing I love them, just but that out. one, I don't know what it was. Yeah. There was something about that one that I absolutely had yeah. so much fun with that one. So, all right. So you'll be seeing us like four weeks in a row. You will be. Can you handle it? I know. Can we handle it? Who just texted me? What? Mind your business. Oh, Tarquin's getting his hair cut tomorrow. Oh, good. Okay. So we'll get into some knitting and I'm going to start with patterns. Why don't I start with what you're wearing? Oh, let's start we don't with usually what we're do wearing. That. 
I, I am wearing my, my um, slip extravaganza from Stephen West. This is last year's uh, mystery knit along. I'm not going to take it off because then I have to put it back on. But all of the yarn is from Lolo Did It. Yeah. The only one I know the name of, I believe this green is Rumpelstiltskin. It's a great name. And the rest I don't recall. Beautiful. This one is actually Naked Hip Can they find that on your project page? Absolutely not. There's no project page for this. Good. The white-ish color is um, Naked Hippo. Okay. That I do know as well. Wonderful. And you are wearing? I am wearing my one of my um, Sockhead Slouch beanies. This mm. is my second one, I think, that I ever knit. This is also known as the Chitara hat. <laughs> it <laughs> it's is. knit out of Malabrigo Rios um, Machetta. Hey. No, not Rios. Malabrigo Machetta. Machita. Mach- it's a single ply. Yeah. Um, heavily speckled yarn. I have a few of these, and I think I have a few more skeins that are waiting. You do? I know you have one more that you bought specifically yeah. for. Th- no, you You bought it at Margie's. No, I bought this one? No, this the, one I the bought. one that's waiting. Oh. The blue one, I think you bought it at Margie's when we were there for the yeah. sock, not sock hop, shop hop. Yeah. This one I bought at um, Yarn Barn. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I'm totally slumming it today because it's a gray day and we heard some thunder in the background. It's not snowing or anything. Um, I'm wearing my Ranger by Jared Flood. And I'm also just wearing a plain t-shirt and some sweatpants and some knit socks. So I'm I'm, uh, I'm all about the slumming it today. Good for you. Ranger just had an update. Do you know what was updated? Yeah, there was like a a stitch count, I think, that was... um, maybe a little bit off in the beginning or something or in one of them. I didn't have any trouble knitting this, so I don't know. Okay. But maybe it's for a certain size. I'm not quite sure. All right. So that's what we're wearing. That's what we're wearing. And then I'm going to start um, with some patterns because I've, I purchased a lot of patterns. So we well, don't lots often... Lots of chit-chats. For all well, of you new folk, this is what we do. Yeah. We don't often talk about the patterns that we no, purchased and I, that we're I not like that knitting. We're, I like to share the patterns. I think it's important. So... All of these, um, I either bought them because they were on sale because they just came out, or they were um, proceeds were going to a charity. Uh-huh. So the first one that I'll show this is the Safe Space by Skinanigans. Oh, I didn't see this one. So Skinanigans does the um, other like the something northerly or southerly Wester- westerly blanket. Northwesterly, yeah, North a lot Easterly? of people, or, yeah, a lot of people had been knitting that. So this one, um, proceeds to this were being matched and going to the Trevor Project. So oh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, last post I saw it was somewhere around like with matching seventeen thousand dollars going to the Trevor Project. Wow. Um, I do know that that I will double check, but I'm pretty sure that that has ended. Um, well, skinny anagans. I just want to make go. sure the microphone was plugged in. We didn't do a sound check. We didn't do a sound check, so hopefully this works. Um, yeah, so that is all done. So raised over thirteen thousand dollars. Wow, for that's the incredible! Project. So, what I a great um, stash buster and like advent. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, so then the next one that I bought, they're little hexagons. Yeah, they're mm-hmm. little hexagons, and you need them. And garter the stitch. How easy? So this one is I s- was shared. For our hashtag, um, and it was Nurse something or other. We met her at Rhinebeck. Oh, we met she's, a lot of nurses. I know, at but she's I from. Con- that. I'm pretty sure she's from Connecticut, mm-hmm. and she knit this hat. And her friend um, Kristen designed it. It's called Hat for Dan. And Dan was her, um, is her brother in law who. Um, passed away recently Mm -hmm. so all the proceeds for this are going to i want to say it's rutledge fire fire company so it's a dk weight hat i think it was like a five dollar pattern so i love a good dk hat so i decided to pick this one up so that's hat for dan um and all of these patterns will be down below then the next one the next patterns were all on sale. One of them still is. So the first one was um, Hohi Locatelli came out with a new shawl called The Collective. Oh, yeah. It looks cool. It has some brioche in it. 
it's one skein plus some leftover. So I thought that's a really oh, great that's way great. Great idea. to knit up a shawl. There's mm-hmm. some brioche in it. So this is the collective. I think it's it's a nice, um, like a scarfy type of shawl instead of something like this. You yeah. know, it, more, oh, that's not a great picture. Here's another picture, you know? So I think that's another good stash buster. Yeah. And then... Um, be a good gift knit too. Yeah. Then next up, I purchased the Parkview hat from Tracy Miller. Yeah, this one was cute. This one, because it is fingering held together with mohair, but it could also be DK. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be fun. I do have a fingering and um, Surrey Mm -hmm. that I may use for it. That'll be the first time you're using Surrey. It would be. So this, she used a self-striping yarn in it. So that was one of the reasons that she... Like, knit this because it's a fun way to use self-striping with a solid mohair. Yeah. And then the last one was... And this one, I believe, is still on... This is gorgeous. He actually just posted today on He Instagram. still has a sale for this, I yeah. believe. It's going until Christmas, I think. This is the Dahlia hat by mm-hmm. um, Jonathan Tallow. Yeah. So we had showed his new shawl, the um, Brioche Adventure shawl, right? Last time. But this one, Aaron from Fiber Hustle knit this... And I forgot to buy it the last time it was on sale. So I saw it was on sale again and I decided to pick it up. There is a matching cowl for that hat also. Yeah. It's so, not too late to knit a Dahlia hat for yourself or as a Christmas gift. He has a, ad, a code to use uh, is Advent 21 if you don't have the pattern. Um, and it goes until Christmas Day. Okay. So this is on, on Instagram. If you don't already follow uh, Made by Talo on Instagram. He's got like, he's got 20 patterns. Or something like that on Ravelry. Oh, nice. They're beautiful. Yeah, really nice. So design. that's just um, some of the patterns that I've seen recently that I picked up. Lovely. So why don't we jump and talk about some FOs? Okay. I have one. I have two and an eighth. Okay. So why don't you um, begin? I'll start with my my little one. I'm counting this as an FO because I think it's just freaking adorable. Um, I'm continuing on these little these little hat. This is from uh, this is Hat Vent. 2019 so i did another one we're going to turn these all into ornaments i think this is the sixth one and that's and, by uh, jody brown this is by jody brown she's got and i we talked about this a lot but i got these like little mini pom-poms this one's just the stripe this one's called the candy cane hat Cute. Mm-hmm. one thing that i'm having tr- that i have trouble with and it's just an ornament so i guess it doesn't matter is the carrying the yarn uh with magic loop so i'm using magic mm-hmm. loop so to carry the second the second yarn up I'm having trouble figuring out exactly how to do that. It makes sense in my head because it's like literally it's it's knitting in the round. But with the magic loop, when I'm pulling out that back needle, I'm not really quite sure how to put the other one. If anybody has any ideas or has any like links to any videos, which I, I'll admit I haven't really searched hard for it. Um, but it creates this like little seam, which I, you know. Let me, may I see please? Yeah. Thanks. So um, that's my only thing. I was thinking about starting the beginning of the round maybe in like a couple of stitches in so that it'll be easier for me to carry up the yarn. I'm thinking maybe that's gonna that would be um, a solution. But I'm ha- I am having trouble with just um, with carrying up the yarn over there. I don't know. Maybe if you just go through and like tighten up your stitches, it may be okay. Maybe. It's just hard though because it's at the beginning of, you know, beginning and end of the round. Yeah. So um, that's one. It's, it's very cute. I think it's adorable. Boop. These little pom poms definitely make it. And I'm they using um, Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Sport Weight. Sport right? Weight. Yeah. And I think that's just re- called Red and White. What size needles are those knit on? That is a good question. <laughs> this is living in my Knit for Brains. This is my uh, my hat sack right now for these guys. Oh, look, I have the needles right in here. I'm using my Chowgoo's Interchangeable set and i think this is a us7 it is a us7 4.5 okay, um cool and i'm just doing the magic loop just because it's it's a lot easier for me and here's the yarn will of the andes this is called white this is, might be called like hollyberry hollyberry and then there's also uh we have a lot of other colors too that we're using so i'm just adding them to my little collection very nice just build in my collection of little hats and then we'll give those um we'll give those away as like little ornaments or package toppers or something. Yeah, they're cute. But I love this bag. It's a really great adorable. bag. Anything that like Christmassy that has to do with like drinks or cookies. Me too. I'm it's a sucker for. So. Cozy. Um, 
All right. All, all right. right. So right. next up, my first F.O. is a sweater. But it's a dog sweater. It's cute. So this is... Oh, you should have worn yours. Easy Dog Sweaters by um, Talking Tales. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. It's a cute dog. Um, all of the yarn is Knit Picks, Wool of the Andes. This is leftover yarn from my Montrealer. And that's the Superwash. This is Superwash. And yeah. I just um, reversed my stripes on my Montrealer. This was my main stripe. And then these. this was my one accent. I do wish I thought it out a little bit more and had one more orange stripe up here. But whatevs, it's still really it's cute. It's super cute. He looks and adorable in it. I used the I light blue for the back. Um, and it's seamed. So this is knit on a US 6 for your ribbing and a US 8 for the body. I did make a couple changes. I added one stitch to each piece. I think this one calls for like... 40. Oh my gosh, look at him, guys. <laughs> so cute. So each of the pieces, when you cast it on, it's an odd number of stitches, which just felt wrong to me. So I just added one to make it an even number. Um, and I pretty much followed the length. The schematics have a row length, but also um, like a row count and then just the length. I went by length because I'm a loose knitter, uh -huh. so it didn't really work for me. And what else? I made this a little bit shorter um, because I've made him one of these, which I'm going to show in a second to talk about growth as a knitter. Um, so I made this a little bit shorter than I did on his original one. And then the other thing I did is it had said to like here to get the shaping to just bind one off. I just did some knit two togethers and SSKs instead just to make it a little bit of a cleaner edge. And that's um, it's super pretty much cute. that. I did these stripes six rows and then this stripe four rows. Right. That way I also could count easily that, you know, 10, 20, 30, just so that I had an easy way to count my rows. So. And it hasn't been washed yet. No, it hasn't been washed or washed. Which will probably, it'll probably grow a little bit since it's super washed. But what I wanted to do next was talk about like growth as a knitter, this was a really good project to show that for me. Yeah. So here is the same sweater. This is one of the first things I made. And this is all acrylic yarn, probably from Joann's. It's really soft though. Um, it's super soft. And thick and It's nice. worn beautifully. Yeah. And so I want to show things that I wouldn't let slide now, I guess. So as you can see, my ribbing, I forgot to do something here. So I broke my ribbing there. I broke it down here. A few times. A few times. Um, I did not use smaller needles for the ribbing. So this is just like really flappy and loose. Um, and then for my seaming, y'all, <laughs> I didn't apparently know anything about seaming. So you can just see how poorly <laughs> my uh -huh. seam is there. But he wore it, and here, it, it was nice for him. Um, up here is awful. Like, this is just a hot mess up there. Like, I don't know what I did. Looks like my knitting part. Um, but it was really nice to go back and visit the same pattern. Yeah. Oh, this, I don't know if I show this. Like, you can't even, look at this bump. I don't even know what I did there. But it was really fun to revisit a pattern. I mean... Gosh, probably seven years later. Yeah, I mean, like, you're, and like, good job. Yeah, I did a mattress seam on those, or which I just love that. It's mm -hmm. beautiful. But now yeah, I need to... a really nice seam. I need to knit him another sweater because Caleb, over at Drowning in Yarn, decided to knit his dog a beautiful sweater out of that Pearl Soho pattern. And I saw it, and I'm like, crap. Yeah, I saw it, really too. I almost cute. bought so it. I'm going to... I think I'm going to knit him that. So, okay. yeah, so this was a good... Um, comparison and this piece i said i made it shorter because sometimes he um tinkles on, it. on that so this i cut some length off so that doesn't happen anymore yeah but yeah it's a nice quick pattern i think you know maybe two days yeah three days max to knit yeah. it up and um it is so the the thing it is a free pattern it's a good pattern 
but it doesn't give you different sizing for different sizing it says to use a smaller yarn and a larger or a smaller oh. needle or a larger yarn and a larger needle so that's the only thing it's very um much meant it looks like for a small dog mm-hmm. so there's not a bunch of there's no sizing in it it's one size um but yeah but it's it, easier to easy techniques where you can probably modify and add some stitches or you know whatever yeah I, it's literally there, there's no it's knit and pearls yeah that's it yeah totally so that is my only um fo for the week all right i have two they're the same pattern we um i showed this was a whip last time but it's finished this is the muscle bra hat um we are knitting the for our nieces and nephews are they not adorable so i finished one and i knit the second one and these are identical but because, and I'll, I'll open them up soon, but I just wanted to kind of show, um, like with the, you know, you can have it as a folded brim. And these are for, um, they're for six-year-olds. And I am using, if I can find the bag that I had everything in. I do not have it over here. No? I know you're using Oh, I do. Here it is. Bearded it's Pearl. another cute bag. This is by the Bearded Pearl. I love that bag. I do too. Um, okay, so the yarns that I'm using is this by Savvy Skeins. This is, I'll show you in just one sec. This is um, Savvy Skeins, and it is in the Pink Flamingo colorway. This is from that Birds Club. Yeah, it was a 2021 club. It was mm-hmm. Beautiful Birds. Beautiful Birds, yeah, and it came with a you know beautiful artwork. Yep. So it's on her Sensible Sock Base, which is an 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. It's 420 yards for 100 grams. So I did that for one half of the hat, and then I used Knit Pick Stroll fingering in frost for the second one, the second color. I got gauge with, or my gauge was, because you don't get gauge, you, you knit the hat, with the muscle bra pattern, you knit the hat and then you measure gauge and then you, you know, you work your increases and stitch count and all of that stuff based on the gauge that you got. So I got seven stitches per inch on a US four. Um, I used fixed circulars, 16 inch circulars. Um, I believe I use the Addies they're downstairs. And then for the, uh, the increases and decreases, I like to do it on magic loop as opposed to DPNs. It's just more convenient for me. Um, and then especially like you can slide those stitches over if you want to like, you know, measure or tweak or anything like that. So it's a US 4 3.5 millimeter needle. Um, it, these worked up really, really fast. It's, it's good. It's good hanging out knitting. Like I knit a lot of it during our last knit night or the past two knit nights that we've had. Cause you're just knitting it around. You can, you don't have to like look up or anything. And, um, but. I just want to say too, this is the pattern Thank you. by Isolde Teague. Isolde Teague, yep. Um, so it is a very popular pattern right now. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, and it's great because I showed the last podcast. I knit a worsted weight version for one of my coworkers, which she loved, by the way. Um, and so it's really the concept is easy. If you don't, if you don't know, you're just knitting a, a, a big tube, boom, like this. And then you tuck the one side into the other and you can wear it slouchy. You can fold up the brim. We thought it would be cute to do the two different colors. Yeah. Somebody did ask, how do you know where to add the next color in? And I thought that was a really good question. So um, the counts and everything is, it's a paid for pattern, but just say if you needed to knit 15 inches total, it gives you the total, the total count, the length of the hat. We would, knit seven and a half inches with the first color and then switch out to the next one and then just continue following the pattern to tell you to start decreasing at say like 12 inches just you know from the top you can just continue on like and decrease where it tells you to yeah. decrease so that's what we ended up doing the hats are um are identical they're super cute these are going to get a nice little bath and um just like lay, i'm going to lay it flat to dry we uh, what size? The, I did the 
child, adult small child. slash child yeah. for these. And we thought also like the kids will grow into them. And, um, you know, it, it it's very stretchy. And with the US-4, you get a lot of Yeah, it makes a it lot much of looser stretch. fabric. Yeah, and I think it'll be much more comfortable for their head. And also, they both have amazing hair. hair. They really do. So uh, I think it'll be good for their full heads of, of hair. So I did two of those. That's my fourth muscle bro now. Good for you. I know. So keeping with the trend, I am my first whip is one. I'm knitting this for, I've knit one already. So this yep. is the one for our nephew, one of our nephews. So I'm using Knit Picks. I still, this is my, like my favorite. This outfit. was uh, Beyond the Wall. Yeah. I'm also doing the child, adult, small. Mm-hmm. And I just added my second color last oh, night. Oh, great. Which, wow, that really blends in nicely. Yeah, I'm using Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Dove uh-huh. Heather yeah, for this. Yeah, and yeah. these are each 50 gram balls, and yeah. they are more than enough to complete an adult. I did an adult medium mm-hmm. and had a little bit of each. So you could get an adult large with 250 gram balls, most likely. Um, so I, again, start mine on Magic Loop. Once I'm done with my increases, I switch over to fixed circulars. These are Addy Rockets. Oh, that's what I was using too. Um, US 4s. And what else? And then I use the Tin Can Knits um, pinhole cast on, which I've linked that in last week's episode. So I will link that in this week's as well. And okay. this is Living in My Fox Bag by Whimsy Stitches that it's I just beautiful. bought. beautiful. Which is super cute. Yes, and we're going to talk about Whimsy Stitches um, very shortly we because thought. we have some... I know, but isn't it so cute? Acquisitions, yes. So that is Adorable. with number one. Okay. So I have a half-finished object. I haven't cast on the second one just yet. I could not wait. So in the last episode... You all witnessed me purchase some kits from North Bay Fiber. That is not brioche. It is not brioche. I kept saying that the mitts were brioche. They're not brioche. That's why the title of the last episode was These Mitts Are Not not Brioche. brioche. So North Bay Fiber had these kits for the Hudson mitts. Um, And let me just pull that up because I I wasn't, um, wasn't prepared here. We have, I got a new app, or we both got a new app on our phone. I didn't buy it yet. Oh, I did. I have to. Oh. Um, On a recommendation from Caleb from Drowning in Yarn, we watched his video. uh, Maybe we'll have that link down below as well. But we watched, I don't know when he put it out, but it was like the top five things that he can't live without or knitters need or something. His videos are always awesome. He recommended this app called... um, good good notes it is a paid for app and it it, what it does is it it keeps track of all of your pdfs and you can write on them and leave notes and you can scan files and add pictures and all this this really cool stuff and so he made a good point because i used to use knit companion as well and then it got a little bit complicated so this is straightforward it's super easy to use anyway um that is good notes. So this is the Hudson Mitts. It's by Dory Kirshner, aka Fitter Knitter. And there's the pattern. Really I and from a, like from farther away I thought it was brioche. You guys can see why I would think that, right? If you didn't really look closely. No? Okay, well. Anyway. Um <laughs> Jill Um Zelinsky from North Bay Fiber, also known as Knitterella, had she started up a yarn company and I've talked about this often because I am very much in love with her yarn and she put together some kits. I'll show you another one. Actually, maybe I'll show you now. This is part of an acquisition, but we have so many acquisitions to show that hmm, I'd rather show you now. So I bought two kits. Um, one, I'm, I'm not going to open it. It's crinkly, but it comes with a mini and then a main color. And I bought two of them to make the mitts. So I may have missed this. What size mitt did you make? I didn't even talk about the mitt yet. I was just, I was talking about everything else except for the project. This is one mitt. Yay. 
I actually it's really cute. love it. Isn't yeah. it very cute? Yeah, it's nice. It's super cute. Have you tried it on? This is a medium, by the way. There's, uh, I don't think there's three or four sizes. And, oh, it fits you very well. Yeah, this nice. is using steelhead and natural for these mitts. It's knit on nine inch circular needles. Oh, yes, that's right. <laughs> mitts that are knit on nine inch circular needles, which was right up my alley. Um, I learned a couple of things already doing these mitts. The cast on is an alternating cable cast on. So because it's a, uh, you know, it is a paid for pattern, but you can tell this is a one by one rib. So I did an alternating cable cast on, you know, for the one by one rib. I think it created a really nice edge. Hmm. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. And I have to say, um, the yarn is wonderful. It's so light and airy. I think it's yeah, a, that is... a worsted sp- or a uh, woolen spun. This is um, polypay and... It is woolen spun. Yeah. It is... Um... Polypay and merino? No. Oh, targi. Oh, targi. Polypay wool. Sorry. And it's super soft. It's super light and lofty. Like, this weighs like and nothing. That's one of the benefits of a worsted spun is that you get... Or, I'm sorry, spun. woolen spun. Yeah. Woolen spun is because there's so much air in it, it's a much lighter... Um, it makes a much lighter fabric. Totally. But super warm. And the inside of the mitts, um, it, you know, you have the, with the slip stitches and the and the floats in here, it creates like an, an extra dense, warm fabric, which is amazing. Um, it knit up pretty quick. My one thing was, I think it's the nine inch circulars that I used. Um, I don't think I have them. Maybe I do. I actually do. So we have the Chow Gu shorties set the interchangeable ones the the small they come in that like that blue pouch and i was able to make a nine inch circular needle with my two inch tips and then the the cord here i think i think i was having some trouble because it's not it's not um like super round like you have these these extra little bends in here Mm -hmm. and to hold it i didn't find it super comfortable to knit on those needles, I found that when I was slipping my stitches, it felt a little bit tight. So I couldn't really get into a nice flow with them. Um, but I really think it's the needle. Are you sure this is just... needle. Oh, I'm like... Yeah. But it it was it was nice knitting it in the round. I don't want to try Magic Loop and I don't want to try DPNs either because I love, you know, me and my nine inch circulars. I wouldn't to do the next one no, just because, because it would your probably tension be could be different. So mm-hmm. you would get a different fabric. Yeah. So maybe for your second pair, try. Yeah, I think for those, I might try the other one, um, the other colors. And you don't think a six, you couldn't do it on 16 inch needles, huh? No, because the nine inch, so you're, the, the circumference right. of this is, you know, what about still 10? pretty small. I could probably do a 10 inch. Okay. But I don't have a cord to make 10 inch. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Um, So I would, like I need a new set of needles, like I need a hole in the head, but I would, um, I would probably get, I would probably get um, a fixed circular set. I enjoy fixed circular, circulars for small circumference. There are two, two needle sizes for the pattern. I use um, the recommended US fours and US sixes. For the mitts, the fours are for the ribbing. And I did a sewn bind off, which was recommended in the pattern, which is also a really, really nice edge. You do that for your thumb as well. And I'm really happy with it. I'm very excited to cast on the next one. I, this yarn, I my, one of my dreams is to make a sweater out of this yarn. What did I buy that? I bought yarn for... Yeah, you I bought, think I'm going to do a hat. You bought three skeins. You bought the... the three, three colors. Three colors. So I think it was. I was going to look for a color work hat, maybe. Yeah, but if you're not using them, I'd be happy Absolutely to not. use them. Absolutely not. Nope, nope. Um, mine is mine. Mm-hmm. So I knit the medium. I did make some modifications in the pattern just for length. Oh. In the pattern itself, she allows... Not allows you, but recommends if you wanted a longer cuff, um, you can knit... And she gives you the the count to do a longer cuff, which is what I did. The hand, you can go a little bit longer, which I did. Um, And I added, I think I added two more rows for the hand because I have 
I have some, you know, larger hands, I guess. And then I added um, three extra rounds for my for the top of it. I did measure what I had left because I was like, oh shoot, I'm I'm like, you know, if you, <laughs> I'm like making all these modifications and adding all this length. Am I going to have enough to make the second one? So I have 10 grams left of this little guy, and then I have 35 grams left of this guy, which is more than enough. We started with 52 grams of this. It says 50 grams, but you gave a little bit more, and then 17 grams of this one. Okay. So I only use 7 grams of this, and then do the math for this one, so I've got plenty left over. Awesome. Yeah. And um, I'm very, very happy. It's super... It's super warm, and I love it. They're... I think it looks cool right yeah yeah it's it's really nice i like the um yeah the detail of it me too i wasn't Good sure job. about the slip stitches because i was like oh shoot am i like are they too tight but they're not it looks it worked out perfectly yeah yeah it worked out perfectly like that's why i'm saying i think it might just be my my needle the needle and, and where i hold it yeah which makes a difference you don't realize it sometimes um how much your needle can affect your knitting totally like super super um convenient to have the interchangeable set to like do things like this yeah and it worked it's you know no problem for other things i mean we use this for hats and and different projects too you use though i i, I use these a i've lot. never used those oh really yeah i've never oh used yeah them. no i use these a lot i just i think i just it's preference i think i'm just much more comfortable using uh fixed i'm definitely a magic looper yeah at, you like magic at, yeah i'm, I'm, a, core. I'm a circular I'm a all core. the way um, but I do love oh. a good fixed 16 inch. Oh, I'll show this after. Yeah. I do like a, a good fixed um, 16 inch yes. for hats. Yes. Because I don't mind switching to Magic Loop to do my decreases for that. All right. So I think I covered I have... everything with there. It's it's a beautiful pattern. Um, she just had an update to it. Oh, good. As well. Uh huh. All right. So I have one more whip. Oops. This is living in my Lila Styles bag, my Gryffindor. I love that bag. I don't think she has those bags for sale. I don't know. So this, you guys haven't seen in a while. I um, had show this a couple weeks ago. I stopped working on it for a bit, and I just picked it back up after I finished. I think after I finished my last um, hat. Once I finished that, I needed a little palette cleansing. So I palette picked, cleansing. Palette cleansing. So I picked these up. This is a vanilla sock that I'm knitting. I I I I'm a fan of pooling. I so, love pooling. It looks so cool. I'm knitting these Magic Loop on my Chowgu US one 2.25. The yarn is from Lolo Did It. This color is Only Girl in the World. This is from the August 2020 Downton Abbey Upstairs and Downstairs Club. And then my contrast for my heel and toes is this one, which I don't know if I have the tag for. Oh, I do. Here we go. This is called... Look how little that tag is. is wonderful cute. Things. Look at the cute little tag. Look at the cute little tag. So this is little Wonderful little Things. Little. So this is like um, some pink and very... Li little bit of blue here or there and almost like a gray mm. do you want to talk about how you rolled that one up i hand wind this so i don't with my minis i use the swift i, use I the, don't yeah i use the swift the reason i don't like the swift and maybe it's i just haven't done it in a while yeah is i don't like how loose those can get it does it does get loose so i hand wind these i just yeah. sit on the couch put the skein over my knees mm -hmm. and i hand wind them it doesn't take long no it's a 20 gram mini or, or whatever the case yeah. is so um, with this, I cast on 68 stitches, which I'm never doing again. My, my <laughs> wow. Point. No, so here's the thing that I don't like about doing an odd, that odd number of stitches is I did not like doing my one, I did a two by two twisted rib. I don't like that it, the next round on my needle started with pearls. I like when it starts with a knit stitch. Mm -hmm. So that kind of irritated me a bit. And then trying to fit, um, I did a heel flap and gusset because that is my favorite heel. Yeah. So I always refer to the coffee talk pattern because I like that. I refer to that one when I do a contrast, um, a contrast color because that pattern has one written into it. So right. it 
takes that into account. Right. I think my next pair of socks is actually going to have a, a heel flap and gusset. Um, what I like about this too, and you and I had talked about heels just the other day or when I was knitting this one is I think the reason I don't, or I'm not a fan of a cut in heel or the fish lips kiss heel Mm -hmm. is it gets, I've talked about this before. It gets tight up on my instep, um, instep, but it's because this adds some length. Yep to it where those don't so i think if i do try those again i'll just knit a couple rounds and then do my fish lips kiss heel yes and i Um, think that's actually what the recommendation is and i've done that before especially toe up you want to knit a couple of extra rounds before the fish lips yes so this is or afterwards i'm sorry this is where i was when you guys last saw this so i did make quite a bit of progress on here i um like i said 68 stitches i knit seven and a half inches on Mm -hmm. this one um, I do find, I think in the past I was knitting seven, but I wanted a little extra length. So when I tried this on, it hit just below my calf. Okay. So I didn't have to add any extra stitches for it to go over it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I knit about, I think it's seven inches from the heel. So I start from here will be seven inches. So I'm almost at my toe. Um, I just put this on hold so that it's I beautiful. Could... This yarn is gorgeous. Yeah, I am a huge fan of Lolo Did It yarn. Yeah, I me too. really like the yarn that I've purchased. Like I said, this is all Lolo Did It, which I love. Tarquin's um, snoring. This is seventy five twenty five, but this yarn is eighty five fifteen. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so that's my whip. Nice, my and I do love the whip. pooling. Honestly, I, so I'm, I'm a fan of it. Actually, what happened is during the last last time I showed this, I thought of taking it out because I really love the colors and I thought about knitting a hat with it. Uh-huh. But then I said, heck no, I'm just going to keep going and finish it because I realized I don't have a lot of knit socks. Yeah. So I would like to add to my collection because I do I do like wearing them and I don't I know I've mentioned I don't mind wearing them in the spring and even summer. Mm-hmm. I don't feel my feet get too warm. So um yeah, so I decided to keep it, and it was nice. I like knitting. Um, it is. I agree. It's nice knitting in the round. Yep. And just doing something plain and simple. Yep. So it's a nice, um, nice break. Agreed. And that's my knitting content. Okay. I have two more whips. These are still. I did not make much progress, the since the last time that I showed it, because, muscle bra and. Christmas knitting and kind Christmas of. knitting and all that fun stuff. But I will show it because I did make some progress and I think that they're super cute. Um, this I'm almost at my heel. This is my Christmas socks. I won't spend a lot of time talking about these. But I the more I like look at them, the, the cuter I think that yeah. they are. And I'm so curious to see how this yarn, like to see how the fabric turns out, you know, after it's it because I am gonna I, I usually don't soak and block my socks yeah um i usually just wear them and then you know when then we wash them when we wash them but these before wear i want to i want to wash them first soak them this is with west yorkshire spinners they're four ply um we got this last year i think i talked about this is the called their candy cane color way it's number whatever six or nine eight nine or zero five nine seven which is a great color. And I did show my finished sock, so I do have one finished one. And I did not do contrasting heels, toes, or cuffs, but I did do a fish lips kiss heel, which this one actually, um, I think this is going to be a really good fit. And I love how the colors kind of work themselves out. So they are super matchy right now. We're matchy matchy. And I'm almost at my heel. I'll have these done within the next few days probably. Nice. Just because it is nice now that the the hats are done, this is gonna be my my couch knitting knitting in the round while we're watching shows. And then this is on Le Garçon. Le Garçon, who had a shop update today. They did. They did. Beautiful bags. I love. This is my favorite. Yeah. 
This is like my. I know. Sock I bag. need to use mine more. You know why I like it as I a have... sock bag too is because it has a little bat, like the zipper part in the back. Yeah. So I keep like little things in here if I drop stitches Smart. or extra waist yarn, things like that. I have needles in mine, which I silly. I need to. We've actually been talking about that. We need a better needle storage solution. Yeah. So that's something I'm going to look into organizing. Because I really dislike the way that we have our needles organized right now. I think there's got to be a better way. So there is one. Our friend um, Jeff. Jeff, who we knit with on Thursday nights, he has he uses this. I can't remember the name of the product. Delic. It's Delicue. from Delic. Oh, it's gorgeous. It is on my um, my wish list, and I think I'll probably grab some after Christmas. Oh, nice. Yeah, um, because I think it's gonna be it'll be awesome. Anyway, um, and then this is. This is my shawl, my angler shawl by uh, Jill Zielinski using her northbound, northbound, um, North Bay fiber. This is angler. Showed this before. This is going to be my focus, I think, now that some of the, the Christmas knitting is done. Um, I showed this. I used the same yarn in my... My mitts, the North Bay Fiber uh, Heritage Base, which is the we just talked about, and this is in Steelhead. This project is so much fun to knit, and it's so cozy and comfortable. And I don't know if I have a marker in where I was last. Oh yeah, I did not make much progress. But I, can you just help me? I just I'm afraid it's gonna fall out. So, box tail, yay! Um, this is just a simple triangular shawl. With, you've got garter section. Look how long it's been sitting in there without me knitting. You can see the the creases. So I was here. I did a, another section. Oh, you, I mean, you made a decent. That's about yeah. what? An inch and a half, two inches? Two inches or so. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. And I'll finish this off, but I love it. I love the stitch definition of this yarn. And we talked about this when we were at, uh, when we were at. Rhinebeck. Rhinebeck. And we met Jill. She was wearing this shawl. Yeah. And I, you know, touching it and feeling it, how amazingly soft and squishy it was, even after washing and blocking it. Yeah. That I can't wait. I think it's going to be such an incredibly comfortable shawl. I think that's one of the beautiful things, too, about a non super wash yarn yeah. is how it changes after blocking. Yes. It's such, um, like, if you haven't done it and you think that were dramatic. We're so not. We're not. I promise. It's we're not such dramatic. a difference. Um, yeah. And the sti the stitches look different. I yeah, feel it just like. allows everything to breathe and relax, mm -hmm. and it just softens up so much. It's unbelievable. Yeah, like I love I love the little details. You know, you've got your um, like slip stitches along the side here. Yeah, the different um, just simple like garter and stockinette. But it for me, it just. It's like the epitome of like comfy, cozy, knitted shawl. Yeah. And her patterns are really good. I knit her 800 yeah. yard dash yep. shawl. They're um, very easy to follow. She's got a lot of good pattern support. She's a, a wonderful person. Yeah, Super she's nice. Cute. Yeah. So, um, and this is living in also in a bearded pro bag. That's, it's this is one of my favorites. Ever. Mine too. So, and I think that's all, that's all the projects that we have going on that is so we'll um before we get into i don't know that we do we have happy mail i don't think so right yes we do oh we do oh yeah we do duh so before we get into happy mail and acquisitions i just want to go over coupon codes you mean so, owl post owl post um so coupon codes can always be found down below in the description in the show notes so we have naughty knitting sacks which is prickle pants 15 for 15 percent off your order Trilogy Yarns, which is NATR 15 for 15% 15 off, excluding her She's clubs. been busy. She's been busy. killing it with her um, yarn dyeing. Then we have Knit Swag, yes. which is Kevin and Ray for 15% off your order. We have Lila Styles, Love NATR 10, 10% off your order. Always Queenie Believe, which is 9-inch Cirque for 20% mm -hmm. off. Um, then we have... Doodlebug Yarn Shop, which is NATR Yarny Friends 20 for 20% 20 off. And lastly, we have Kitty Did Bags, mm -hmm. which is Kevin and Ray 10 for 10% off your order. Yeah. So oh, we didn't use our coupon code when we bought um, oh. our bags. I'm just kidding. Right. So first up, we did get some Owl Post. We did. Guys, these are monster. 
Yeah. I want to bring it with me tonight. We're going to a friend's house tonight. Yeah, we're going to Friends Miss. Friends Miss. This we year. have not. Yeah, I'm. I'm so excited to like I go don't know and the hang last out. Time we did we, it's something. been a long time. It's probably before COVID. Has it been? Yeah. No. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, did I tell you all that I got my booster? No, you did didn't. We talk Good about job. this. Yeah, thanks. I got my booster two weeks ago. Yeah. Um. Anyway, that was just me. Okay. Look, so our knit swag, frosted glass steins. These are legit. So mine has the lightning bolt, and mine has the golden and snitch. snitch. Super. You can see the wings in person. Yeah, you, do, um, it's you just, totally it's can. It's not picking it up right now, but it's probably to our lights are um quite bright. They are quite bright. So yeah, so you guys light, know um, bright, light, we bright. love knit swag. Speaking of knit swag, knit swag was recently on Fiber Chats. <gasps> yeah, so we have to catch up on our Fiber Chats. A Nancy our from friends? Trilogy Yarns is on Fiber Chats. Michael from Peace for Peace Crafting was also on an episode of Fiber Chats recently. Did his go out though? Did it? I feel that, yeah. And then... Oh, it did? So, Ross has done one from Smells Like Yarn, and Chevis from Chevy Rell Stuff has one coming out. All of um, our friends. So, go check out Fiber Chats. We did one ages ago. Oh, you know who else had one? Is um Martin oh, from yeah. Knit365. Is it that's right? Is it Knit365 blog? 365 blog. Blog. Right? Three. Yeah, Martin. We love Martin. Yeah. The Welsh tenor. Welsh tenor, Martin. He's, he's amazing. Um, I feel like I could talk to him for, or he can talk to me for days. Yeah, I love sure. his voice. Um, so yeah, so if you, I know it's, our, we did ours a while ago. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of great um, makers, whether they're, um, oh, and um, didn't Jonathan, Jonathan Tallow do one? I Jonathan so. Tallow did one. So yeah, Irina is great. She, yeah, please, yeah, follow Fiber Chats if you haven't. Yeah. Um, it's really neat to just listen to other people's perspectives. Hear their there, stories. Yeah, there was a, uh, combat crochet i think did one which yep. was really cool he's got a really cool story it's really you never know what you're gonna find she's got a ton of videos now um yeah. up there so there's you know people doing lever knitting which was really interesting I'm to sorry me. what is it called lever knitting what the lever lever knitting lever knitting? lever knitting it's with the belt you know the, a the... belt that you knit with i think I, like I... you wear a belt and you put your yarn on your belt no you put like your needle there the person who holds the world record for the fastest knitter I think it's called a, it's a lever knitter. I'm Can gonna, you all correct me? Because I'm probably wrong. I usually talk out of my, my hiney hole. So if I'm not, please tell me that, validate me. If I am wrong, you can tell me. I can I can handle it. But I think okay. it's lever knitting. So um, there's some lever knitters on there that she's got. Which yeah. I think is very interesting. So check out Fiber Chats with Irina and her guest. Um, they're just great. It's great way to know people and um in the community yeah and hear their stories totes so that was our owl post so let's yeah. move on so anyway guys. i want to bring these tonight so we can drink our beer out of it i'd be too afraid to break it I'm me too so in, but they're super in, thick i don't think you can break i know these. but in in travel yeah through in transit in transit yes um so this is going to be a little bit long guys from this point forward. If you're not interested in just hearing us gush over yarn and bags and everything yeah. else in between. So, um, take a break. Thanks for coming. Yeah, take Use a break. The go, go pee. Get a snack mm-hmm. and a drink and we'll Speaking meet you right Speaking of drinks, is here. this not the most obnoxious mug you've ever seen? Isn't it huge? No, you know which one actually I forgot that we have? What? Mm. Remember my... This t- is from Target. No, it's Rite No, Aid. it's Rite Aid. Rite Aid? We didn't buy it. I think your Oh, mom, I think it was a gift. I think your mom gave us those ones. I think it came in like one of those, you get no. the two mugs and like some- Candy, a can, hot, yeah, chocolate hot chocolate thing. Yeah, gift my, set. You know what I was thinking, and I haven't used it in forever, my Gemini mug? Like oh, that yeah. mug's huge. It is huge. It's not- Where is that safe. mug? I don't know. I don't think it's in the cabinet. I think it's in the top shelf oh. of that cabinet. Okay. Hey, bud. Yeah. Um. All right, so let's talk about some acquisitions. Let's do it. So first up, we both got these. I'm only going to show one. She hits these out of the park. I can't even. So you know our love for Amanda Knits. Mm-hmm. Um, we are part of her Supernatural Club. This is month four. So this is... Um, How long is this going on for? Six? six. So we have two more one shipments. So this one is based on Dean. This is called Dude Wears the Pie. So what's funny is she gives you the picture it's based on and some commentary about it. He's not it. so bad looking, huh? Uh, no. Um, and how she developed the colorway, which again, you don't get that often. And I think you it's get a so sticker. interesting. 
of the picture that's inspired. And then here's the quote. Where's the pie? Does he really say where's the pie? Yeah, dude. Yeah, where's the pie? <laughs> um, so it's just, it's such a nice added touch to yeah. a club. So here's the color. It's so good. This is on her Cantus base, which is 8020. It's a uh, so 400 good. yards, 100 grams. Just, again, one of our favorite dyers. Yeah. So what club did we do previously? Harry Potter. We're the yeah. egg one. I knit um, my entire uh, slip extravaganza out of that. Yeah. Almost. Um, so next, Not slip extravaganza. No, this. That. No, no. that's slip extravaganza. No, you're... Um, the one that Vertices Unite. Out of the Manonuts. I did. Thank you. Yes. Um, so next up is Whimsy Stitches. Rick over at Whimsy Stitches had an update. Who we did meet also at Rhinebeck. We and did. He is such a pleasure yes. to hang out with. So I saw some holiday themed, or like not just, yeah, holiday themed, oh. wintry themed bags. So I decided to go over and grab some before they sold out. I also got myself a little no Notions pouch. So this was just nice, cute Downton Abbey notions pouch. Lady Grantham. Is that what it says? No, but I love Lady Grantham. So oh. this, I thought this was a good size. Yeah. To um, house He's stuff. Fine. Then this one. Oh, these are gorgeous. So these are just like great. I think you could fit a shawl in here. Oh, absolutely. Great um, size bag. Absolutely. So this is hot cocoa, some cappuccino, mm. little gingerbread, snowflakes. What if you had a hot cocoa cappuccino mixed together? Would that be a mochaccino? Sure Probably. would. Absolutely. Right? Okay. Damn it. So, I thought I was onto something. You're... And it's then... like the time that I... Yeah. No. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I know what you were going to say. Yeah, we're not going to so... <laughs> so, so this one is a, I another think I like... holiday themed baking is this one. one? Mine? Or are we just sharing? Which them? one do you want? Take it. Okay. Which one? Wait. No. Give this back for a second. Why? Because you, sir. Let's not judge. It was not no. a judge-free zone. Look, pay attention. You They're sir, over here. Say hello. You, sir, have taken all of the holiday-themed bags, correct? I have because you. who doesn't use bags very often? Who just show projects in two bags? Okay. Then, this guy right here. Because you probably did it right before the podcast. No. I've been to, to being show. really good about using stuff that I have. Whatever. I am currently using one, two, three, four, five project bags at one time. Are they all holiday themed? Uh, three of them are. So this you, one doesn't count as holiday. Although fine, I, you could take this one. I'll, it's fine. No, no, we'll just share. No, I'll take this one. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. This one's cute. You didn't talk about this one because you got distracted. I just did. You did? Well, I th I don't know. It's got like um, recipe for for gingerbread cookies on here. Did you say that? Well, it's cutters. not like a real recipe. You can't make it. It doesn't give you baking time. One cup of butter, one and a half cups of sugar, one egg, three cups of flour, one cup of ginger, two cups of cinnamon. No. Teaspoons. <laughs> do you think that would work? We should try it. And, and let two tablespoons know. of dark syrup. It doesn't tell you what to do with all that stuff. Mix it together. And then what? You just and then you the form oven? a dough and then you make cookies and put it in the oven. Okay. Probably typically for about 10 to 15 Oh my God, minutes. this is so cute. Thank you so much for my bag, Kevin. You're welcome. You're a jerk. <laughs> um... And then uh, it, Rick was nice enough to send over some, like, progress keepers. These are so cute. Look at this one, y'all. A little wreath. That I love. Wait. Wreath. Mm -hmm. A Christmas tree. I'll take this one. <laughs> Maybe I'll take this one, too. And then... Oh, it's so cute. This is a little, like, Santa Claus bag that says Merry Christmas. Thank a gift you, bag. baby. Adorbs. Yeah. Um, and then a nice little thank you card, which was really sweet. Really sweet. So, um, good also guy. Yeah, good he also guy. dyes yarn too. So check out Whimsy Stitches if you haven't. So that was our Whimsy Stitches purchases. Hey, good I have a question for y'all. Where do you guys keep all of your progress keepers and stitch markers? Well, I'll tell no, you let's where go. I keep mine. I'm going to say that aren't um, that are like this, right? So where do you keep them all? I don't have a spot for all mine. No? I was putting them in a bag like this. Yep. With like stickers that we get and things like that. I kind of have them all in one of these. Mm -hmm. So if you have a great storage solution for these, let us know. 
down below in the comments. That's a good idea. Yeah. I use my um I use my Lolo did it when we did the Dumbledore. That's what I Dumbledore. use. I use that. That's the one that I yeah, use actually for all of those and I um some fun stickers. I have like all of my fun my fun things. It's my fun bag. Um all right, so next up that we both made a very similar purchase. This was from our trip to Westport Yarns. Yes, it was. This was um, some bags from Katie. Mm -hmm. So we've shown these ba types of bags before. Here, so I, can, I have stuff mine in mind so I can show first. Like... So I got this one with the arrows, and I got a matching Notions pouch, which I th believe is fit new for her, the Notion pouches. Yeah. So on the interior of the bag, there is a little clasp that you can hook up your Notions pouch to. Mm-hmm which is super convenient. Um, and I got my arrow with a white zipper. She had one with a black one, but I felt the white um, just made them pop a lot more. Totally. So I got totally. that. And then it is a snap closure. Closure. So it's a magnetic, nothing for your yarn to get caught on. Really nice um, handles. And this is a good size... Good size bag. Very good size bag. And the cool thing about these bags is that they turn into yarn bowl or they turn into bowls. Like a basket. Like a basket. Mm -hmm. So what you do is they have these little tabs and mine is pulled down right now. But it pops back open. And then you can close and it. And then you can close it. Right? Super Fill smart. Fill it up and close it. Yeah. Super, super smart. So this is the one that I got. I thought she has some, and I think she still has some in her shop. She's got some beautiful ones with like holiday lights, Christmas lights in yeah. different colors. There's um, um, a blue one, a white one, and I think a black one. Yeah, one of them has like a silver base um, down here. Really, really nice. The, the quality of these bags are incredible. I yeah. know Kevin said and that. And she's super sweet. It was really she's great to meet sweet. her. So I also opted for, now mine's hooked up in there. Oh, you probably can't see it because I have my project in here. Um, I have my Notions pouch in here as well. This one matches the bag too. And I also, I got the, uh, she had one with like the red Oh, has yeah? the zipper as well, but okay. I like the high contrast, so yeah. I got the. Um... And it matches the handle too for you. Yep. And I didn't put anything in here yet, but this would be a really good, like I'll put my stitch markers and different things like that in here. I'll be using this quite often, I'm sure. And I like this because this could be this feels like the holidays, but then I bet in the summertime it'll also just feel like a knitted bag, so I can use it. Yeah. Whenever I want to. Look at you. Right. So smart. I know. Okay. So next up is the not a Westport Yarns purchase. This was purchased prior to us going. So Brooklyn Tweed, um, I think it was Black Friday weekend here in the U.S., so Thanksgiving weekend in the U.S., so two weeks ago, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They had the, they had started the, I think it's like, I forget what the heck it's called. Something okay. together. Apart but together. Okay. Like knit something or other, guys. Does anybody know? Let's check their Instagram feed. Because I really dislike that I don't know. Okay. But whatever the case is. So they have, um, it's kind of a sale. Oh, a part together. So it's a part together community. It ran from November 26th to November 29th. Um, they, based on your purchase, and you can select a discount code if you wanted to, you didn't have to, they then make a donation. Mm-hmm. So I made some purchases with the intent of specific projects. And I wanted to do a Harlow hat with the colors that I originally wanted to. And I want to go down a size. I made the large. I would like to make the medium. I also had thought about knitting a worsted weight one, not knowing that Andrea Mowry was coming out with a worsted weight pattern. And it just came out. It's live. Yes. I also wanted to do the Prince Edward mitts. Oh, yeah. So I got some yarn for that. I want to do Prince Edward mitts as well. So I purchased... So we have some Arbor here. These are all 50 gram skeins of yarn from Brooklyn Tweed. This is the spruce color. So oh, it's they're Point Edward mitts. Point Edward, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Here's I the pattern. Saying, no, yeah. that's okay. I keep saying it too. So I would like to knit those. Um, and it's a DK weight pattern, correct? Uh, DK. I don't know. Okay. So I bought Arbor in Spruce. This is DK weight. It's 145 yards. It is DK. And this is a worsted spun. 
Then also in Arbor, That's I a bought great color. Um, Porter. Which is... I didn't see your purchases. This is like a black. Yeah. I think... Yeah. This is black. Again, um... It's very difficult to find a like a nice black yeah. yarn, I think, like a true black. Like this doesn't have any like tonality to it. It's just solid, which is nice. Then for my next Harlow hat, I went with it's very similar in color, it's just the oh. second color is gonna be darker than my original one. Mm-hmm. So I got some Brooklyn Tweed Loft, which is what it was knit with. They changed their label. Yeah, I, it's really funny because I have other loft here that's a little different, I think, huh. the original one. So this is um, cast iron, and then this is soot. And this is the two colors that were shown in the pattern page. I originally knit the hat with sweatshirt, which is right. a much lighter, lighter. gray. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to cast on the medium Perfect. with this, and I will probably actually have enough to do two of those with my leftover cast iron from the other hat. So I could get a second hat out of it if I chose to. Cool. Um, and then I don't, oh, here is, so shelter. This is what I was thinking of doing for the worsted weight version. Oh, these are similar in colors too. Yeah, I wanted to some similar tones. Yeah. So this is shelter, this is worsted spun. Um, so, or I'm sorry, worsted, woolen spun. So was loft. And this color here is almanac, and this one is old world. So I thought the oh. two blues would be really nice together. Yeah. Um, this is has some red tones in it as well. Like the flex? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and even some darker, maybe like a darker, like Cabernet mm-hmm. purpley color in there. Does shelter usually have flex in it? I believe so. Yeah. yeah. If you look at it, even oh. like I this, I mean, Loft yeah, I guess doesn't Loft, really. Well, this, these are, it are looks those? tweedy. Yeah. Almost, almost but tweedy, it's yeah. not. Yeah. yeah. And then, Very woolly. um, I love it. guys, I'm not quite sure. Kev, this is, Oh, here's, this was another idea. I think this is what I couldn't decide what color I wanted. So you just bought everything. I bought the stuff to make hats. So this is shelter again. For possibly another Harlow. Um, this is Hayloft. And then this is Yellowstone. So I think this would be good. A main color, contrast color. Yeah, because it's reversible. So Yeah. Yeah. And then lastly, just some Yellowstone. Because I re- I think I've ha- have um I think I have Loft and Caraway, mm. which is a dark black in almost this color so yeah. then they would work well together well so. i think that'll be nice for color work too if you like a color work yoke or something mm-hmm. um and sweater and i also thought of doing again the paddle mitts again yeah because i do wear my paddle mitts mine too mine are so stretched often. out now they are too but i think we need to soak them yeah i agree but mine back mine shape. has um mine has started to felt you know, because you're wearing them on your hands, and you're obviously doing stuff with your hands. Correct. Um, like, and you're sweating and, and you know, like, yeah. Well, yeah, you know, all that stuff. So, um, but they're and, super cozy. You know, before we move on to more purchases, I forgot to show this earlier. So I did oh, a yeah. little bit, little bit of dyeing, and um, I was inspired by Ray's Opus shawl, which was gray, purple, and green. Mm-hmm. So I just mixed up some gray yarn. Nope. Gray dye, purple dye, and green dye, and did a different application than what I normally do, and came up with this beauty. It is beautiful. It's very, it's really nice. It's really, really pretty. So, um, yeah, so that's that. I don't know what the name is yet. We'll figure it out. Very nice. Um, what do you, do you have any purchases, or am I the only one here? Well, do not tell, yeah, you have purchases from Westport Yarn. Yeah. I mean, we, the, the, the bulk of the Westport Yarn purchase was really kind of just both of us and it wasn't like you were picking and choosing you were just clearing out shelves stop it i did yeah you did i did okay so remember if you guys remember about an hour and 10 minutes ago (laughs) i was talking about um the way that west point yarns had their their sock yarn 
um, situated with the different, you know, with the same color family. So you can kind of create a fade or, you know, do whatever. It'd be easier to look for certain things. Our niece, um, Tarek was sleeping with his eyes open. It's really creepy right now. It scared me. Our niece, her favorite color right now is like mint green mint and a peach green and peach she has this very light like limey minty green hat that her mom got her and she loves i knit the sock head cowl i think for her mom and she's been wearing it and so she wants one she wants one now she wants a sock head cowl so i'm gonna make her this the sock head cowl um and I went to their little green bin and I found this yarn, which is a little bit more limey. Yeah. But if you look at the hat, it ma- I and I checked with her mom, it um it matches the hat that she wears perfectly. There. Yep. So that's gonna be a really good that's gonna be a really good match for her sock head cowl. Or yeah. So I'm gonna knit that up. This is Gigi Bonin yarn, hand dyed with yarn with attitude. It's a new to me dyer. Never heard of them before. It's uh, oh, they have an Etsy shop. Gigi Bonin. There's the information. We'll have that link down below. It's eighty percent merino, twenty percent nylon, four hundred yards. Uh, it's in the colorway limeade. So so it is limeade. Lime. Yeah, but it'll work out. It'll yeah. match her hat, and she loves her hat. It's, she said it. You know, so it'll work out perfectly. So I got that. It's really soft. Um, we also, I also got yarn for the Harlow as well. And I think these will go really, really nicely. This is by Hudson and West, which I have never tried their yarn before. Is that DK? I hope not. I thought it was worsted. But maybe it's DK, then I can do the other one. Yeah. You could do either one. I don't know what it is. Well, it's 100%, um, no, it's 70% Merino and 30% Coradale. And I got two different colors. So this Forge, I think, is their, their base. It's a base, yeah. This is Gold Leaf. And then I got this one here in Tobacco. And I thought those would look really nice together as a um, as a neutral, because I'm, I'm about neutrals now this time. So we'll see. <laughs> a neutral uh, Harlow. It'll be reversible brioche. I think these will look nice together. It's um. Let's see. So it's twenty to eighteen stitches. I don't know offhand what that would be. The gauge. Oh, uh, number four. So worsted. Worsted. Yeah. Look, it has number number four. The like the little number four. Thing oh, okay. That there. So I, I think these are worsted. Nice. I've never heard of Hudson and West. Did I? Yeah, I've heard of them. I just we've never knit with them. Yeah. So it'll be a nice. Um, yeah, it's non superwash. I think it'll be it'll be nice. It feels um. Nice and bouncy. And it's got a nice twist on it. I don't know how many plies this is, but... Sourced in the United States, spun in Greenwich, New York, and dyed in Pennsylvania and North Carolina. Yeah. So I like them. I thought this was really cool. Um, Also, while we were there, we found... Where did we see these? Somebody was knitting with them. Yeah, somebody was knitting with them. Recently, and they talked about these. So we thought of getting some, and we saw them at Westport Yarns and we picked them up. Yeah, I can't remember one of the podcasts that we watch. Uh, and they had talked, yeah, they talked about these specifically. I don't remember who it was. I don't know. Oh, well. But we wanted to try some 10-inch circular needles. And this is the the Addy Easy Knit. So the whole concept behind this is um, that the needles are two different sizes. If you can see, they're two different lengths. This one, obviously, this side's longer. This side's shorter. And um, it, it should be more ergonomic for you to, like, hold on to, especially if you have trouble knitting with smaller circumference knit, uh, knitting needles. Yeah, especially if your hands cramp. And that's one of the things that people um, don't like with these short needles is that they find that their hands will cramp because you don't yeah. have a lot to hold on to. Um, so this gives you a little extra length on... The side that you would knit with. Right. But, um, 
So like it gives you, would you a hold, little extra yes. length. And I think even um, just and having I, that extra. Yeah. And I love the tips. These are not super pointy. Oh, no, I was ru- No, I was running into some trouble. Remember with my Addy Super Sharps? Or, no, your higher higher Flyers. Higher higher Sharps. Yeah. They're too sharp Correct. for socks, I thought. So we thought, we thought we would give those a try. And then the other thing we picked up was we've talked about these before. So and the reason I got these is we have something very similar and I wanted to compare them um, because what they do feel very different. I no, actually here's you don't think so. No, oh, this is the one that. Oh, yeah. No. Right. All right. I know. Oh, yeah. So this we've seen on a lot of other podcasts. We've seen it on Instagram. This is the Knitting Barber. So these are the cords that you can use to put your stitches on hold. Yep. It comes with, I believe, so it comes with a 60-inch and two 30-inch cords. So here's what they are. I got blue. I got white. Um, and what you do with these is you put them on the tip of your needle. And they're silicone, so they attach pretty well. And it allows you to slide your stitches from your needle... Yep. To this cord. So that you can put your like stitches on hold or put right. them on to try on a sweater. So here you go. You just do this and it makes a pretty solid connection. Yeah. And you twist and it's supposed to like come off. This isn't coming off right now. There we go. Um, well, which is good. Yeah, then, like, you don't want it to. You don't want your stitches, your stitches to, to fly everywhere. So... When we initially went to go look for these a couple months ago, we couldn't find them. And I want to believe that it was Chevis who said that, or somebody, I want to say it was Chevis, who had mentioned that it's very similar to, it's called Pony String, I believe, which is a string used for like crafting, like beading. So we had purchased that. This is the, the pony pony bead string, Pony String. And I think I got five different colors of that string. Yeah. For maybe ten to fifteen dollars. I don't know the length. Um, so you. Can I mean, cut it's one it. continuous right. thing. You can cut it, but it's got the whole. You hey, probably can't see it. I only have two. I'm missing one. Oh no, it fell. Okay. Um, but yeah, so you can cut it to length, which I've done before. Mm-hmm. Um, for sleeves and stuff. So very I'm, similar. It feels incredibly similar. Yeah. Um, the, the um, what call it? I would say the the, not the makeup of it. But it, it but, yeah. seems very similar. So I I figured let's buy them, give them a shot, and see if there's yeah. any type of difference. Right. Um. So that we could speak to that. Yeah. These are sixteen dollars and fifty cents. And these were like five sets of different four to five of these, for the same price. We'll say. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, obviously budget friendly for sure. Right, definitely budget friendly. But if they have the same, you know, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, we'll use Time them. Will tell. We'll let you guys know. Yeah. But I mean, th- these maybe feel a little bit more substantial. I don't know. I'll, I'm will i going to use them both. I yeah, used, they're, they're, they're much more substantial, actually. I've actually used the white of the one downstairs. You think so? Uh, no, they, I mean, maybe well, a little bit thicker. Yeah, this actually. one feels a little bit thicker, like firmer. So possibly, but who knows? I don't know. Yeah, I just I didn't want to speak to. You yeah. couldn't speak to these if anybody ever asked yeah. us about them. Right. Um, but, but you know, like anything else, there's, there's at least there's options. There's options. There's for sure. There's options if you don't want to spend seventeen dollars on rubber cords. Right. You know. Um, and then, but the I, concept is super cool. Right. Yeah. Am I last now, or do you have more? Um, no, but I will show this real quick. Um, the yarn, I showed you the the yarn that I got from from Jill. But she also included like a sticker and stuff. Both of them came in a, a little... Um, That's a nice bag. Isn't that cute? Yeah. A little bag. I love it. That's all. Okay. Okay. All right, so here's where things got interesting at Westport Yarns, y'all. Yeah. That is for damn sure. So, when you first walk in, 
on the right hand side and this is when you walk in from the front not from the back entrance so is there a back in, entrance as i well? believe so oh i didn't know so was that open to the public i believe so okay um so when you walk into the front entrance on the right hand side are some shelves that are there 50 percent off bin so i go in i'm perusing and one almost one entire shelf was discontinued brooklyn tweed loft and some ranch other too. things yeah Right. And some Rancho too. Right. So I had to stop myself for a moment and I picked up a skein and I said, and I asked, um, I think it was the owner. I said, um, well, it started, it was a process. It was a process. This was a get... process for Kevin. Kevin, Kevin was processing. I can see in his head. We weren't talking about it at this point. I didn't even know that there was a, a shelf there, but we were like perusing the store and he kept you know, going over, and I can tell he, you, Kevin wears his thinking face, like what? bright and center. Yes, I front and center. I can, I can always tell. And then all of a sudden, he like comes up to me and he's like, "So this might be crazy. Am I crazy? I can't really." And he was like trying to talk it out. He's like, "I think I might be crazy." I'm like, "Well, what? What?" He's like, "I think I want to buy out all of their Brooklyn tweed." I'm like, <laughs> "What?" So then he was like, well, it's all 50% off over here. So then we went over there and then... I grabbed a skein. Yeah. And I asked the owner, I said, um, is this really 50% off? And then she explained that Brooklyn Tweed um, it doesn't go on sale. Yeah. But these colors are all discontinued. So at that point, they can go on sale because you can't get them anymore. So she had a limited number of skeins of these colors and not enough if somebody wanted to buy a sweater's quantity worth. Um, so they were there. They were on sale and they were 50% off. So I just grabbed anything that had three skeins or more. Which was everything except for two skeins. I, and I said this. It. I said this. I wish that I had taken a before and after picture. And I'm great. And I think it's great because it was a joint thing. You got He got my approval, which was nice. We talked it out. We had a, a good conversation. So we're just going to go through. Um, some of the colors that we got. Well, no, I'll go through them all. But yeah. first up, um, so I got some. This is wool socks. So it's a nice, like, burnty orange. It's beautiful. Color. Yep. And these are all discontinued, unfortunately. These yeah, colors. these are all discontinued yeah. colors. So um, they. I thought it would be really nice. Um, we'll have to just, like, create a whole QB for yeah. Brooklyn Tweed. So maybe I bought them if they had two colors or more, or two skeins or more. So this one is Fauna. That's pretty. Yeah, this is like they a, all go so they a all greeny go, brown. Yeah, they all go really well together. They're all they very, actually like, really do. Yeah, they really um, do. That'll be a nice sweater. This I like too. This is tent. Yeah, it's a nice green. Um, then Let's this see, is actually. a nice beige. This is tallow. So it comes across almost like a pink, peachy pink, but it's really beige. No, it's not. Yeah. Um, then this is meteorite. So this is a dark brown. Yeah. It's like a reddish brown almost. No, maybe not. No, like a, no, no, there's like grays and blues in it. Mm -hmm. Um, that I showed. Ray's hungry. You heard my stomach? Heard your stomach growling. Um, that's meteorite as well. Oh, we got a couple. You got four or five skeins of that one. And then the Rancho 2 I got was Burdock. So another green. So very similar color oh, look at families. These, look at they. I think they all yeah, go it goes really, really well together. Yeah, it really does. So I did think I have an, I really do have enough to do a DK sweater. Yeah. So that you might have more be, than enough. Yeah, it's... more than enough. So it might be. So that's a possibility. Yeah. But I couldn't pass up. Um, I couldn't pass it off. Fifty percent off is yeah, fifty percent off Brooklyn Tweed, law. especially for Brooklyn Tweed. That the, and it Brooklyn now, Tweed is actually affordable too, if you think about it. It's sixteen dollars around there somewhere, you know, for the so, fifty gram skeins. Right. It it obviously it's not um, it's not like the thirty dollars a skein or anything like right, that. right for a fifty know? gram. So fifty percent off is significant. All this yarn for for what we paid for it. All right. So that's it. That's all the purchases. That's all the Owl Post. That's all the goody stuff. So let's talk about. We like to end with. That's all the. That's all the fiber. It's all the wool. Yeah, that's all the wool. All the wool. Wool. Is... 
And then we'd like to end with what we've been um, reading and watching. Okay. So watching, um, we've watched Hawkeye. We've been watching Hawkeye on Disney+. Plus. Yes. There's We're all caught up. There are four episodes currently. Four episodes, all caught up. I really like the interaction between Hawkeye and Kate Bishop, who's played by Haley, Haley something. I don't know. Yeah, she's really good. Yeah, I have seen her in... Oh, she's from Ender's Game. That's where I know She is from. also from... Um, we haven't watched it, but I think it was Dickinson on Apple TV Plus, maybe? Okay. And she's also in Bumblebee movie. I haven't seen that one either. Um, is it the but, cartoon one? No. It was the just Transformers. Oh, the Transformers. The Bumblebee Oh, movie. I see, I see, I see, I see. I see. Um, so I, I do like her as an actress. She is also a singer. She is? Yeah, she is. She's I didn't know that. a singer as well. Um... Yeah, I, I really, I've been enjoying it. It's a good, it gives you a lot more Hawkeye and you don't get a lot of Hawkeye in the Marvel universe. Right. He's very much a background character for the majority of that. So this definitely sheds some light on his character. Which is nice because it's like a softer character. Like he's a family guy, you know, but always wants yeah. to do the right thing. I think it's, they're doing a really good job. I was saying this to Kevin last night. I think... This phase, because right, Marvel does like phases. This phase of of what they're doing is has been really good. Mm-hmm. It's not just about like putting out the movies and the theaters and stuff. It's like the the shows and the yeah the specials and stuff that they're having. I think they're they're doing a really really good job. Um, and then we've been watching our Hallmark movies on Saturday nights typically. Yeah, last night was not a good. Well, last no, night last was night we didn't night. watch. Um, no. We typically do Saturday. And Sunday nights, yeah. I think, we'll yeah. watch some. So yeah. um, we've been keeping up on those. I watched the Maze Runner trilogy. So Oh, yeah, you did. All three I, of them, right? Yeah, and I didn't think that I had seen the third movie, but after watching it, I'm pretty sure that I did, which is then leads me to believe that that third movie is pretty forgettable, mm. which I think it kind of is. It wasn't my favorite out of... I never saw the third one. You probably did, but forgot like I did. I don't know if I actually did or not. I love the first one. I, I still enjoy the first one. The second one was good. This one was pretty forgettable. I don't like the way that the story was wrapped up. Okay. Um. I just, uh, yeah. Mm. But um. then what else have we watched? Anything else good? I don't think so. Mm. We've done We've our been podcasts, doing a lot of podcasts. Our podcast, yeah. our Hallmark, Hawkeye. Yeah. And I think that's pretty much like it. And then we just have like our fillers that we... Always talk about, you know, on YouTube, Good Mythical Morning, and then mm-hmm. our um, Tri Channel. Those are kind of like our things because at nighttime, it's just a time to kind of relax and yeah. Get set and in sometimes and... it takes a while for Tarquin to settle down after dinner. For sure. So, like, to have like something quick, like a 15 minute, 10 minute yeah. video on YouTube. Like yeah, it Good makes Mythical it super Morning. easy. Yeah, something super... you don't have to commit to that you just get to walk yep. away from. Yep. Um, and then reading, I've read. What is this? A sticker? That It's a bookmark. I've read two books and I'm reading my third one. Magnetic. Did you show this? Did you show this? No, I did not. Look how cool this this came with the Amanda Nitz. So it's a bookmark. Yeah, it's a magnetic bookmark. But look, it's got a little magnet. So you put it on your your page. Yep. How fun is that? I know, right? And I bet she made this. She did. So I finished reading um, Tallowood by N.R. Walker. That's a male male romance but not really like it's more of a murder mystery but there's Mm. male male romance in it okay um and i thoroughly enjoyed the book i love the two characters i did not expect the killers to killer to be the killer um i thought it wrapped up incredibly well i will read more books by that author and i've started reading the Vampire Knitting Club. I've oh, yeah, read, you were talking about this. Um, this is by Nancy Warren. I've read books one and two, which is... I think the first one's just called The Vampire Knitting Club. The second one is called Stitches and Witches. And I'm currently reading Crochet and Cauldron. Oh. So, guys, this series is cute. There's not a lot of, like, substance to it. So I'm ki- I am missing that a little bit. There's not, like any details about the vampires Mm. um not a lot of details about like witches right even though there's vampires and witches um it takes place in oxford 
the main character's parents are archaeologists and the main vampire owns a house in what's right outside of oxford again remember woodstock woodstock so it has it feels very similar to discovery of witches set up Mm -hmm. so it's kind of weird to me to be reading it because i do get a lot of similarities between the two of them yeah um so i rented it for free from kindle the first three books so i will finish reading those and then i'll determine whether or not i'm going to go forward we've had a little bit of a chat on it in our discord server um which which thank you all for joining our discord server it's fun it's been so nice to log in and like see people like chatting and helping each other out and all that really fun um and that's it for my reading um okay i finished shadow of night by um deborah harkness it was like i remembered it gets better i i keep saying this but it does get better every time you read it um i opted to we talked about this in the last podcast i opted to skip the third book for right now and i started reading the awakening by nora roberts it's the second book in the dragonheart legacy Okay. Um, I think it's going to be a trilogy, so there will be three books. It's going to be so I read, um, I read the Awakening. This is the Becoming. Did I say the Becoming or the Awakening? I think you said you read the Awakening, and I, I read the Awakening. I started the Becoming, which okay. is book two. Okay. So there's going to be the Awakening, the Becoming, and then the Welcoming. I think or something like that. So I'm on um, the Becoming, okay. which is it's so good. I, is it? Yeah, I forgot how how good it the um the d- character developing and the the um y- not universe the yeah world? I guess the building? world world building it's so good the concept is really um the this woman uh, Breen who's the main character she finds out in the first book that her gr- she's been living with her mom. Her dad was like out of the picture, you know, had passed away. And she found she found some like bank statements saying that she's got four million dollars in her name. She's always been feeling like kind of oppressed, blah, 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 blah. So she used this like money as a motivation to kind of be like, you know what? No, I'm like I'm done having a life that I'm not really happy with. Blah, 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 blah. Come to find out she falls down this like uh rabbit hole not really a rabbit hole but you know like one of those um world like rabbit hole things where she she goes to ireland with her friend in the hopes to like reconnect with her heritage heritage and where her father's from and her grandmother um and then ultimately is introduced to this magical world where there's finds out that there's multiple universe multiple like worlds multiverse kind of like a multiverse okay. and um yeah and so she uh, her grandmother lives in this in this one world and you know there's a romance that ensues and she's starting to like learn that she has some powers and of course um you know in true heroine fashion she's got like the powers of the gods. all different things there is a god involved there's a big baddie which is like her grandfather oh no 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 it's always family drama it is always family drama so the that's really the first book and she kind of goes back to her world um earth yeah earth okay ish yeah okay i, I don't know earth what, one earth one and um then they need her back of course on earth two on earth two it's not really called earth two don't listen to what kevin's saying read the books it's great <laughs> The second book picks up exactly where the first one le- left off. This time, her best friend Marco, who we are introduced Hello. to in the beginning, um, has his own little love story happening, which is super cute. There's uh, a lot of a lot of um, a lot more story building in this one and world building, and you learn a lot about the different characters. I'm totally engrossed in it right now. I'm about halfway through, I think. There's everything you want in it. There's mm-hmm. drama, there's romance, there's humor. Sounds lovely. It's lovely. So um, that's what I'm reading, The Becoming. I prob- right. my, my issue is that I could probably read it in a couple of days. Like, but you don't a read day. a lot. I, lately For it's been like five of... minutes and I'm like, done. But that's how it should be. Yeah. I mean, if you really wanted totally. to read it more, you could, instead of like knitting on a Saturday or Sunday, you could read. No. 
So that's why I only read at night before bed. And I don't know if we talked about this is because I get so sucked into books that I would, if I were to bring it downstairs to like read it, remember like in the apartment and stuff, I would literally walk around the apartment, like oh, reading yeah. the books everywhere I would go. I would, yeah. I, I just True. I get so I do sucked recall in. that. So I only allow myself to read at nighttime okay. before bed. That's right. a little bit so, about me. Good for you. Good for you. So that is everything we have for you guys this yeah. week. And so don't forget, we will be putting a Google, Google Doc, Doc down below for next week's live, which will be the Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Do a little Q&A mm-hmm. to celebrate the 12,000 yeah, subscribers. Ask whatever questions that you want. Yeah. It doesn't have to be all knitting related or you yeah. know, it doesn't have to be all personal. It could We're be not going to get to them all, maybe. Yeah. Well, we'll so see, we'll, depending on how many people want to yeah. post. So I think that's everything, right? I think so, too. All right. Well, we hope you guys have a... Do we have anything exciting happening the next week or so? Well, we're going out for friends this... Yeah, we talked about tonight, that. Tonight, and that's it. Okay. That's all we have going on. Great. What do so, we have for lunch today? Pizza. Oh, you did? What yeah. kind of pizza? Um, We have... Uh, Red Baron? Red Baron. Or... Yeah. Oh, I love Red Baron. I know. Baron. It's going to take a while to cook, so... Okay, we'll start it now. Well, y'all, thank you again, and we will catch you guys live next week, and our next actual podcast episode will be in a fortnight. So I hope you guys have a good two weeks and until next time. Wait, is it, are we podcasting again before Christmas? So or we, do we need to wish everybody a, a happy holidays and Merry Christmas. If all you right. Celebrate. Well, happy holidays, Merry Christmas. If you celebrate our next episode technically would be scheduled on Christmas day. So you and I have to decide if we're going to do it on the 24th or the 26th. We haven't gotten that far yet. Okay. So um, if we do not get one out, um, because then, cri- we're hosting Christmas this we year. We are hosting Christmas this year. So, um, yeah, so happy holidays. Well, we could even say that in our live next week. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll see you yeah. before then. We'll see you guys sometime. But you're going to have four weeks of, of us. Needles at the ready for the next four weeks. So, all right. Jerk. All right, bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>